بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين I am grateful to God the Almighty for giving me the blessing of being here with you and I always look forward to attending the programs organized by Labbaikia Zahra and if I am in London I will try always to be in this program. Inshallah after here, I have to rush to uh, give a speech in the conference on Shiite studies we have in the college. So please forgive me for not being able to be here up to the end of the program, but my heart would be here. A few days ago on Friday, in my English speech for commemoration of birth anniversary of Imam Mahdi, Ajalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. I try to highlight the significance of hope for any faithful person. And now I want to add to that discussion. So this would like to be a follow up for that discussion. And I hope this message would be received by everyone who tries to bring goodness, love, peace, and in general lie to this world. We know that there are always problems and every generation sometimes maybe of course with some exaggeration think that they are facing the greatest problems of the history. So we say we have problems that no one in the past has faced. I don't know. I cannot judge whether our problems are greater than previous generations or not. But for sure, we have lots of problems and challenges. And some of these problems are more challenging because they are new somehow. Some problems are always there. Like for example, war, illness, poverty, injustice. But there are problems today in the world that seem to have, at least on the surface, a new nature. For example, weakening of human personal relations. Maybe this is something new. Breakdown of families with this rate seem to be new. In any case, we face lots of challenges. And what we understand from our hadith is also that when we approach end of time, there would be lots of moral problems. But what I want to share with you as a reminder is that no one who has faith in God, not just as the creator, but also as the Lord, as the one who constantly is running this world and sustaining this world and providing with guidance, should ever be feeling despaired. If there are problems compared to power of God, they are nothing. Sometimes, unfortunately, we have this mentality that we think there are two sources of power in the world. God as the source of goodness and Satan as the source of evil and badness. And there is some equality 
in their power. None of them wins the other. And we are in between. But this is wrong. There is no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can bring any change to this world. The Quran tells us that anything other than God is false. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهُ هُوَ الْحَقِّ وَأَنَّ مَا يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِهِ الْبَاطِلِ Anyone who wants to demand our obedience, our worship, our service is false other than God. Satan or satanic people have no power unless we give them. On the day of judgment, when some people start blaming Satan, as you know, the Satan would reply, La talumuni, lumu anfusakum. Do not blame me. Blame yourself. Why? Because I had no control over you. I had no control, no authority over you. I only called you. So, the real power is with God. But there are temptations. There are illusions. There are confusions. If we go after them, that's our problem. So, any faithful person should never feel despaired as long as he or she is moving on the path that God Almighty has shown us. What I want to mention is first some hadith about the fact that actually when you are in the most difficult condition, you should have more hope. When everything seems to be dark, then that's the time you can expect a flash of light. And then, inshallah, I mentioned one hadith about Imam Mahdi, Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. We have a hadith from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. which our Sunni brothers have mentioned in Kanzul Ummal. Then I mentioned a similar hadith from Shia sources. According to this hadith, Rasulullah said, Kun lima la tarju, arja min lima tarju. Sometimes you have hope in something and sometimes you don't have hope in something. Sometimes based on your calculations, based on your resources and skills and talents and manpower, you think this is where we are going to succeed. But then you look at something else and you see the difficulties and enemies, their power, whatever, you say this is where we are not going to succeed. Rasulullah says, actually with respect to those things that you don't have hope, you should be more hopeful than those things that you have hope. Because don't think that you have no hope, then you would rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His power. But for the thing that you think you can manage by yourself, that's the time that you may actually not be successful. Then as an example, Rasulullah says, the uh, example of Musa alayhi salam. فَإِنَّ أَخِي مُوسَى بْنَ عِمْرَانِ ذَهَبَ لِيَقْتَبِسَ نَارًا فَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ You know the story of Musa alayhi salam when in the night in a very dark night he was taking his family and he was very concerned about the safety of the family 
when he was moving and his concern was just to take them safely, he saw fire. This is the story that we have in the Quran and the Bible. So he saw the fire and my understanding is that he saw the fire actually on the side, not in front. Because the Quran says when he saw the fire, he said to his family, He told his family, please stay. I have so a friendly fire. I am going to check. If the fire was in front of them, they would all have continued. But the fire was on the side and because he was very alert, he saw the fire on the side. This is what we are supposed to be, especially those who are leaders. They need to be 360 degree alert. You cannot just focus on what is in front of you. Many times great opportunities come not on your face. They come on the side. And if you are not careful, you miss those opportunities. So he went to check maybe he can take some fire so that they can use it as a light as a source of guidance but what actually happened was different for the first time he received the revelation from god god started talking to moses did Moses expect that? Never. So Rasulullah says, when you have no hope for something, you should be more hopeful than when you have hope. In Amali by Shaykh Saduq, Rahmatullah Alayh, we have something similar. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, Very similar to what we had in the previous hadith. The example, first, here we have two examples. The first example, Musa, the son of Imran, this also confirms my understanding. He left the road to check the fire and take a piece of fire for family. So when Musa left the family, he was not a prophet. When he went back to the family, he was a prophet. Such a great blessing and opportunity that he didn't expect. Another example is Wakharajat Malakatu Saba. The Queen of Saba. As you know the story of the Queen of Saba meeting Prophet Suleiman. She did not expect anything great to happen. Maximum she thought is to be able to get a deal with Suleiman to be safe and her community, her nation to be safe. But what happened? He embraced faith. This Islam, as you know in the Quran, many, many times Islam is submission to God. Aslamat Ma Suleiman. He believed, she believed in God under the guidance of Prophet Suleiman. So something great happened to Queen of Saba despite her expectations. And the third example Amirul Mu'mineen mentions, وَخَرَجَ سَحَرَةُ فِرْعَوْنَ يَطْلُبُونَ الْعِزَّةَ لِفِرْعَوْنَ You know when the Fir'aun collected best of the magicians of the whole nation, at the beginning, 
They said, Be'izzat Fir'aun. By the dignity of Fir'aun, we are going to start this competition. What they were expecting was, if they win, they will get some reward from Fir'aun. The Quran says in two places that actually they try to fix the rate and the deal before. Because they knew if they win, Fir'aun may forget them. So they said, let's before, when still Fir'aun needs us, we get the deal. But they were very hopeful that they are going to win and they are going to take something from Fir'aun. But what happened was they got something unexpected. They got faith. Some people whose life was spent in magic. And you know magic is not something liked. But God gave them a great opportunity. And they welcomed the opportunity. They were the first to embrace faith. And when Pharaoh said, I am going to punish you and crucify you. No problem. You can kill us. We don't bother. We have returned to our Lord. Did these magicians expect something like this to happen? To become the first martyrs defending the truth? No. So, we should always be hopeful. We should not narrow our minds and define for God a little hole and say, God only can send me the blessing through this hole that I have created. God can give you his blessing from everywhere. How beautifully this is explained in the Quran. Man makhraja. If you have taqwa, this is what you can do. Then Allah will do the rest. I always say, do your best, leave to Allah the rest. Don't ask Allah to do your part. You do your little part, then He will take care of the rest. مَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَةِ وَيَرْزُقْهُ And he would give him also sustenance. A way out plus sustenance. But from where? From where you expect only? No. مَنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِ No one can defeat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can force Allah to change his mind. No one can rob from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his tools. But There is a measure for everything. There is a measure for your patience. There is a measure for the time that you have to wait. There is a measure for preparation that you have to make. But for sure, everything is under control. Nothing goes out of control. So this is what we have to remember. And finally, I want to end with one hadith about the time of Ghaybah and the difficulties of the time of Ghaybah. Imam Qazim. Allah. This is a sample. There are many hadiths like this. This is from Imam Qadim alayhi salam. Tuba al-shi'atina 
المتمسكين بحبنا في غيبة قائمنا امام علیہ السلام says our Shia our followers who would live in the time of occultation in the time of غیبہ who would be deprived from having access to their imam who would be questioned by people why you believe in an imam who is not seen who is not talking to you how many centuries you want to wait for him so they see all these problems and they receive all these criticism but still they are faithful imam is praising those Shia. We have in another hadith from Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. In which Imam says that the people who believe in Imama of Imam Mahdi in the time of Ghaibah and actively wait for him, they are better than their similars in all different times. All other times. Afdalu ahli kulli zaman. So it's a great privilege that we live such difficult time. Because then we can raise the bars. We can improve our standards. As-sabitina ala muwalatina. Those who would remain firm and strong in our wilaya. Then Imam says, Ula'ika minna wa nahnu minhum. What a great honor it is. Imam says, they are from us, we are from them. This is a great expression that shows maximum unity. In some of other lectures I have mentioned what's the meaning of this. For example, when Rasulullah says, Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. Or when Rasulullah says, Aliyun minni wa ana min. This is maximum unity. This is more than saying someone is from us. This is more than that. So Imam Kazim alayhi salam says, Ula'ika minna wa nahnu minhum. Qad radhu bina a'imma wa radhina bihim shi'ah. They are happy with us to be their leaders. We are happy with them to be our people. So this is the blessing of being patient and persistent in this time, keeping your hope and actively working for Imam alayhi salam by bringing justice to the world, by bringing peace to the world by bringing solidarity to the world any movement for peace for solidarity for justice is to be appreciated any person knowingly or unknowingly who works for justice and peace and truth is working for god and is appreciated by imam alayhi salam and i hope we would be able to work together with our brothers and sisters from other faiths, especially I have great hope that lots of things Muslims and Christians are going to do together in end of time. So I hope we all together work and become part and parcel of this universal mission. Thank you very much. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.